And this series that we kicked off last week, Know Thyself, is about us knowing who we really are, which happens when we get to know the one that created us. Because the more that we get to know God and who he is, the more that we get to know our true selves. Mom or not today, we can all struggle, and I'm sure have struggled at times with our identity. We can struggle with being our identity being wrapped up in what we do rather than who we are. And knowing who we are starts with us knowing God, like we talked about last week, and then getting to know what he says about us and believing that over what our culture, what our world says, even over what family might say or any labels that have been attached to us over the years. Maybe it's a label of shame or doubt. Maybe it's a label of not enough or worthless. Maybe you've had the label placed on you of, from a past relationship and some bad decisions. Maybe you've had a label of addiction or betrayal. Maybe a label of guilt that you struggled with. And so with the, with the few minutes that we have left this morning, I want to encourage all of us on this Mother's Day around the thought, fully known. Fully known. Because the truth is, we all wrestle. We all try to find value in what we do or don't do, what we have or don't have. I mean, marketing, media, movies are constantly filling us with this message that we are not enough. And then we add our personal stories or narratives to that, and then that usually amplifies the lie and pushes us and trains us to become professional pretenders. What I mean by that is we get really good at pretending or projecting this false identity based on performance, based on what we do, projecting our best self, our best image. I grew up performing to please, to be noticed, trying to project this image that I don't need anyone. I'm good. I'm, I'm good because I, I don't need anyone. I'm just going to protect myself. And so by protecting myself, I projected this image that I can handle it. I am fine on my own, which was in reality just protecting me from my own insecurities and my own fears fear of not being enough, fear of failure and rejection. This might not be your example today, but I'm sure you can relate in some way to pretending and projecting this image based on performance, based on what you do. But Jesus didn't die for the image we project or who we pretend to be. He died for who we really are. He died for who we really are, and who we really are is children of God. We are his kids. We are his sons and his daughters. We are fully known and loved by God. You know, the first song we sang today, Echo, it's by a man named Torin Wells, and he has a song out called Known, and it's about being fully known and loved by God. That is who we are. It's not for what we do, but we are fully known and loved by God for who we are. Not the projected image, not the cleaned up, polished church version, or the person we're pretending to be, maybe on social media. We are fully known and loved for the real us. We are fully known inside and out by the one who created us. Psalm 139 verses 13 through 16. In the NIV it reads that we were, that God knit us together in our mother's womb and that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. I want to read it to you today from the message. It says, oh yes, you shaped me first inside then out. 
You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, you're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship you in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. We are fully known inside and out by the one who created us. We are his kids. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. See, knowing who we are, his kids, starts with us knowing who God is, and he calls us his children. He created us, and he knows everything about us inside and out. I am fully known and loved by God. You are fully known and loved by God. And who we are, who we are, it trumps or overrides or is greater than what we are known for. And thank God, because I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done a lot of dumb things, especially as a mom. I mean, when I asked my kids this week for them to share a story, like one thing they remembered, guess which one it was? The one where I acted like a psycho. <laughs> we were having a church work day back in Danville, you know, just doing some yard cleanup, good old yard cleanup. My two boys were being boys throwing actual rocks, not pebbles, rocks at each other, which now I'm looking back, I maybe should have just let them keep going. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I projected, I pretended we had to make a little exit to our home, which was right next door. I said, we got to, go, you know, got to run home for just a minute. The moment we walked through that door, this mom went psycho and crazy and said things I should not have said done things I should not have done that are not appropriate for this stage. I've talked through it with my therapist, so I'm good. <laughs> Come on, any moms ever have those psycho moments? Okay, that's the story my kids remember. That's the one. How crazy. But then, thankfully, I have done a few good things. After we started reminiscing about that, we started laughing about all the morning rides to school. When we lived in Illinois, I would take them to school in the morning and they all could still remember this one little phrase that I would say to them. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. And then we would pray and they would say, Dear God, thank you for who you are. I am a man of honor, character, and integrity. I am a leader. I will do the right thing when the wrong thing is easier. They could rattle it off. They started rattling off and laughing about all the things that we used to, of course, put in that prayer and but the one little phrase, remember who you are. I don't do it or say it near as often as what I used to, but I think today this phrase should be something that we walk out of here with because how quickly do we forget who we are? The nation of Israel, God's kids, were quick to forget, and it led them to do all the things they shouldn't have been doing. It led them to do what was right in their eyes. And see, when we forget that we are fully known and loved by God, it leaves this space in our heart for sin and rebellion to sneak in. And so we've got to close the gap. We've got to close the gap by remembering who we are. By remembering who we are. So who are you? Who are you? Do you know the Bible is filled with pages and pages of promise and purpose for each of our lives that speaks to who God is and therefore who we are in him? And so I picked out a few for us today. 
that I want us to grab a hold of so that you can walk out of here and remember who you are as a mom, as a dad, as a sister, as a friend, as a teacher, as a coach, that we would all walk out of here today remembering who we are. The first thing that we've already established, and so I did these points where I said, you are, but if you follow along in the notes that we provide in the app, which we do that every week, you can download the app and do all the things. Don't worry about putting that up there. But the, um, I, I, I made it personal. So the first one is you are fully known and loved by God. Now I want all of us to say, I am fully known and loved by God. We are fully known and loved by God. Remembering who we are. How do we close the gap? We remember who we are, and we remember that we are fully known and loved by God. We've already established that one. This one, second one we've already established, I just want to reiterate, is that you are a child of God. Say, I am, I am. a child of God. I am a child of God. He calls us his kids. The third one that I want you to remember who you are is that you are chosen by God. Say, I am chosen. I am chosen. Deuteronomy 7.6 says, For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. You are chosen by God. He has handpicked you. He has called you his kid, that you are fully known and fully loved by him. You are special to him. You are a holy people. You are chosen by God. Say, I am chosen. And I love at the end of this scripture in 1 Peter 2, 9, it says that you may declare the praises of him who called you. Who called you? That's the fourth one I want you to remember, is that you are called by God. You are called by God. Say, I am called. Isaiah 43 from the message reads, but now God's message, the God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel, don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called you your name, your mine. I love this. Not does he just call us. He calls us by name. He knows us. He calls us. He equips us. He knows exactly who we are. And I love this. Second Peter 1, 3. His divine power, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. You are called and you are equipped for exactly where you are. You have everything you need by God's grace and his goodness to fulfill the purpose that he has for your life. You are called, moms, in the season that you are in, whether it's young or old or maybe kids out of the house, you are called for this season. You are equipped for this season. You have everything you need in him to fulfill the days that are ahead. That goes for every one of us, male or female, student, old. It doesn't matter. We are called and we are equipped for this everything we need in him and I love how it says that called us by his own glory the knowledge of him is what called us by his own glory it goes back to again knowing him so we can know who we are and we are called by his glory and his goodness not our own come on mamas are you thankful for that and yes all of the people should be thankful for that we are called by his glory and his goodness. So let's remember who we are. We're fully known and loved by God. I am a child of God. I am called. I am chosen. And the fifth one, last but not least, 
you are enough because he is enough. You are enough because he is enough. Say, I am enough because he is enough. We don't have to strive or perform or manufacture this image or pretend to be someone we're not. Because in him, we are enough. One of the reasons I think that we continue on this rat race, this cycle of being these professional pretenders I think it comes down to not knowing who God is, yes. And so therefore we don't really know who we are in him. But I also think we have a really hard time trusting that God is enough for us. And we find our value and our identity in so many other things. find it in what we do. We find it in, in, like I said, what we don't do. We find it in our careers. We try to find it in ways that we shouldn't. Because ultimately, I think it boils down to us not trusting that our God is enough. And because he is enough, I am enough. I don't have to strive. I don't have to perform. I don't have to pretend. I don't have to project this best image. I am fully known and loved by my creator. I am his daughter. You are his daughter, his son. I am a child of God. I am chosen by him. I am called by him. I am enough because he is enough. One of my favorite scriptures is in Daniel 3.18. I don't have it on the screens. Last week, John talked about King Neb. If you were here, King Neb, and I'd encourage you to go back and check out that message. It's powerful. He shared a little bit about the three guys that were thrown into the fire by King Neb. Remember them? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they... They, they, were, they were willing. They said, I'm not, I'm not going to bow down. If you're not familiar with the story, they were getting ready to be thrown into a fire because they wouldn't worship this king's God, little G God. And they were bold enough, they were willing enough to say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to worship your little G God because I know the one true God. I trust that he is enough for me. And the, re, and the way they exemplified their trust in Daniel 3.18, it says, even if, even if God doesn't show up, you throw me in here, I am still not going to worship your God. Even if God doesn't show up for the circumstance or the situation that you may need or want him to show up for? Are you bold enough? Are you willing to say, God, I trust you that you are enough, even if, God, even if he doesn't come through, we are gonna worship you anyway. These three men were bold enough to say, even if, because they trusted that God was enough for them. And of course, God came through. But what you may not know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because those are the names that we read about and talk about and hear about. In Daniel 1, they're Hebrew names, who they really were. They were given the names by King Neb, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were given those. Those were Babylonian names. Those were not their true name. And their true names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Hananiah means beloved of God, fully known and loved by God. Mishael is, who is this God? Who is this God? Who is like him? None compares to this God. And Azariah means the Lord is my God. 
Come on, these three men, their true name, their true, who God named them and called them, they were known and loved by God. And so they had this, this, this confidence, this, this enoughness in them to know that God was going to pull through. And I wonder if today we can remember who we are, knowing and trusting that God is enough. Therefore, we are enough. Amen.